this video will be about my workflow to my CNC. So before we can go out to the CNC, we need to go from idea to programming. And uh, it starts with a design, the idea you have in your head, you want to design so it can be post-processed. And I use three different software and uh, two of them is also I use for 3D printing. And the third one is what I use for uh, uh, post-processing uh, to my CNC machine. Um, the first one I use is from Autodesk. It's an old one. It's 1-2-3D design. It is not on the development anymore, but it's free and it's still working great. So this is a manual factor design we will work on today and we will use on our machine. 1-2-3D design is really easy to work in and uh, I will put the link in the description for this tool. The second one I also use is uh, Design Spark Mechanical. It's also an open source, totally free tool and is uh, very powerful. And uh, well, I'm not a master in in CAD designs, uh, it's more simple designs I make, but it's uh, good enough for me. And uh, Design Spark Mechanical, I guess, if if you not have a budget like me for for Fusion uh, 360, then this is really a damn good uh, alternative. So when I use uh, One Two Three D and uh, uh, Design Spark Mechanicals, and as an example, you see again the same template. And this I will then want to post-process in my Kafka. Uh, that is uh, the only tool I have on subscription for my CNC. Then I do this as an export as uh, DXF. It could be a little bit more complex. Normally this I would design directly into uh, Kafka which look like that. And uh, Kafka is really a, a strong tool for me. And it's so easy to use. And it, it really fits all my needs. Um, you see there is some text here you didn't see on the other ones. And this text will not be processed with my CNC machine either. This will be done by laser after we have uh, post-processed uh, everything here and sanded it. So uh, the, the Kafka, as I said, is, is really easy to use and uh, it gives me an actual clear view of what's happening. From there, I can save. Uh, the, here you see I have uh, four processes and it's 2.30 and start with 2.30 and it stops with 2.30 and in between we have tool 31 and tool 35. So I use the DDCS V3.1 which I have made a, a post process file for and um, I'm going to have the link in the description for that as well. This post processor works with uh, Kafka and um, it uses the M6 command and it put in the tools and the name of the tools. And it also uses uh, M, uh, the M8 and for that I use it for activating my uh, dust uh, uh, remover system. The M6 uh, and M3 is for start and stop the spindle. Um, as I said, the link will be in description for this as well. If you use Kafka, you can just pick this post processor up there. There is one for millimeter and one for inches. So I save first in one file. If I would only, only make one item, I would have all these tool changes in one file. If I make more than one, like uh, two and up, uh, I will save the tool pass, I hook off this in separate files. This means I will have one G code file for this, 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 and this. 
uh, process and uh, because then I don't have to change the tool so many times. This means I start with a 6mm and mill T30 and run the whole process on item number one, take it out at item number two and uh, run the process, uh, same process again until I have finished all my items and I go to process number two. But that's a very easy way to do it and that's what we now will show on the CNC machine. But before that, I also save uh, uh, a toolpath summary information and this one I will save in I use OneDrive and as you can see here I've saved the text document Kathy's uh, coffee and uh, muffins so then I can go to my phone I open my OneDrive go into my drawer and I find here Kathy's uh, coffee and muffins, the text I just uh, uploaded as you can see here and now I can pick out my tools, tool number 30, tool number 31 and here tool 35 and tool 30 again so I have matter of fact four processes with three tools. So let's pick them out and uh, let's go to the machine. So we are now at the machine and uh, we want to make a couple of, um, of this uh, Cathy's coffee and uh, muffin plates. So uh, in Carveco, I have used the center of the item for um, uh, origin, and then when I do the the, the height of it, this is 18 millimeters uh, and is oak, but when I measure the tool, it will be from the button and up and that's what this tool uh, measure will do so what we just found out was that we have made one file for the whole process for one item only if I only make, want to make one and I have four files for four processes so let's start with that and uh, the first thing we need to do is of course to I made a little mark here, the same I have done on the next, number two, there's a little mark here as well, and uh, this is so I, every time I switch, I will add this to this corner over here, every time. So we will now put this, or tighten this up, I'm sure it is, I have made this pens here, and that is 3D printed, it's quite easy. And these are also 3D printed in PLA and also works like a charm. And for this over here, I will use my Screwdriver. So it fits really nice and tight. Second step now is to take the first tool, and uh, it's quite easy because I can. Uh, the first thing I need to do is absolutely to home my position, and this is why I use a fixed uh, set probing. And I need to be sure that 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 is home, so the coordinate system G53 is correct. And then I will work. I will use G53 when I I do the probe, and then it fits exactly for my item when I work in the in the coordinate system G54. So let's uh, make it uh, go home. And it will take a little time, but lucky us, we can speed up the process. So we have been homing our machine and right now we need to change to the, and that I can find out here because I can go in and load my Cassis Coffee CNC and 
I just stopped the whole process and now I can see here, that's my post processor who make this information here. It says I need to add the T30, which is a six millimeter end mill, and that's this one. So let's do that. That was uh, the first thing. We got uh, changed the tool, and before we probe it, we will find the center of our origin. So we move in here, and to see my cross, I just made it in the center of my item. It's not really needs to be too, so much accurate. So I just do it like this, go a little bit more down, need to find a little bit back and a little bit there. So and that's about it. So I zero out my axis and I just do all three axes. So next step is now to uh, probe my, my set axis and this I do now. should be ready to rock. And before we do that, I will have my ear goggles on. And we will uh, also be sure that my M8 will activate the, the dust remover. And uh, I can press play here now, or start, and it should really start to move. So we have uh, done the first first session here. I think I need to pick this a bit up so I can get this out. And the second process is let me take a look. It looks really great. The second process is to add, and I can see that in my display it's a tool 31, and this is the eight millimeter ball nose which I have here. So let's uh, change to that. And run the second uh, task.
we should be ready to run the no 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 we need to probe of course that we do now I did order the wrong bit, so I had to make some changes here. Um, I will I use the uh, 90 degrees uh, 13 millimeter V bit. That would give me an edge on uh, 45 degrees, just to break the edge, nothing else. So we are finished with the carving and the post processing. Uh, I think it came out really well. So the next step is to get the text absolutely correct. I have some text here here and here and for that we will use uh, our laser and our camera and I will show you how we can place it on top of this very very easy that will be in part two